But welcome to the Butter Watch Show YouTube uh, video video thing here. This is my co-host Brian Moses. Oh, I've never I, all night. I didn't tell you who I am. I'm Pat okay. Regan from uh, Patsad.com and the Creativity Podcast. And that's something you might want to go check out as a sure. creativity podcast. With, uh, a link Jeremy, will be down in the video Jeremy description. Cook. It will be. But on this very special episode of this episode, we're going to talk to Brian. He's uh, going to tell us about what he's done recently with uh, NextCloud and FreeNAS and TailScale all combined into one big old useful thing. Yeah. Um, well, here recently, TailScale has been... Uh, a fascination of both yours and mine. And I, you know, I've been looking at a way to, I guess, tail scale all the things. If you want to borrow a meme, tail scale, what it tail scale is a mesh scale? VPN. Um, so you build your own mesh network of interconnected devices. Uh, but you don't have to easy. do any of the it's, building. You just install TailScale and log yeah. in on all your each I mean, of your devices, and they can all just talk to each other no matter. The where most they are complicated the that it gets is you might get a URL that you have to copy and paste into a browser somewhere. But other than that, there's there's no firewall configuration. There's there's no certificate exchanges. It's just it just works. It's it's fantastic. Um, I am a DIY NAS enthusiast. I've been building them for a long time it's kind of the the core of what my blog's all about and people have always brian is most famous his mo the most famous if, thing he does is build and give yeah, away if, these nas if you found me through google them. it's because of my diy nas adventures and not probably for any other reason um but the entire time that i've been building them people have perpetually asked me i want to self-host my own cloud storage how do you do it? And the answer I always give is, I don't. I mean, I just have it. I, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm paranoid. Maybe it's a little bit. I'm a little bit paranoid. I'm a little bit lazy. I just don't see. I haven't seen the value of exposing things in my network out to the internet. And I don't want to go through the hassle of doing that in the safest way. You know, with different network segments and firewall rules and and all of that. I don't want, it's not nonsense, but it's, I, I just don't want to spend time doing that. So, But the important thing that I'm getting out of this is you don't have to expose your cloud storage service to the internet. You could see it from any of your devices and you could share that, sh you could share that exactly. machine with friends yep. and family. Once, using yeah, once TailScale came around, I saw very quickly that I was going to be able to do cloud or self I, I keep saying cloud self host my own cloud storage solution i i wound up picking next cloud um originally because you know it's got really awesome integration into freenas there's a there's a maintained plugin it's super easy to set up and get running uh but what i wound up finding was getting tail scale running on FreeNAS or in the in a FreeBSD jail was complicated. Not not complicated. I just ran into problems, and it didn't seem like they were problems that other people had ran into and solved. And eventually, I wound up saying, "Well, you know what? You know the jail's not the way to do it for me." And I opted instead to stand up uh, an Ubuntu virtual machine on the FreeBSDs hypervisor beehive and once i did i bet you tail scale will come natively to free free nas and free bsd at some point i bet it'll be a click to install yeah, kind I'd, of thing in i really hope so, so because that would have been that would have been awesome if there was just a tail scale plug-in or if you had the ability to add packages to the core fr tr true nas now to the true nas operating system that would have been, I mean, amazing because that would have been working in, in mere moments. And really, standing up the virtual machine, you know, adding, doing the snap for Nextcloud and, and installing the, the TailScale client, 
that was every bit as easy. I mean, I had that. I expected. I expected it to be way more way more challenging than it actually wound up being. Um, and now I have, thanks to both Nextcloud and Tailscale, I have my own self-hosted cloud storage that I could share with friends and family. And I did all of that without any kind of firewall rules, exposing anything directly to the internet. None of, none of it. It just, I mean, it's just working. It's uh, it's fun. Now I have to go through and figure out. Now, what makes the cloud storage different than, you know, just a file share on your, on your NAS on your file? Well, server? the the cool thing is it does synchronization between all of the different all of the different endpoints that you have connected to your, to your next to your next cloud instance. So you know I could theoretically see a typo on my blog, from my phone, pull it up and pull it up and edit it and have it fixed and solved, you know, rem- remotely without, without any problems or. That's been part of my workflow for, for so yeah. long, not with my phone though. Yeah. I would have a habit, you know, I would edit it, start writing a blog on my desktop and yeah, you know, I have auto save or something going on in my text editor. So then if I, forget to do anything i forget to touch it forget i don't have to remember to commit it to git i just walk off with my laptop and as long as it's been about 30 seconds between me being at one machine or the other i'm synced up at the other machine and i could just continue editing like nothing happened and my editor on both machines is set to auto load if the di- file changes on disk so it just basically looks like yeah, it did at the other that's machine. Fantastic. That's I've been, fantastic. I've been jealous of that. I try and do the same thing just with Samba shares, and I've run into contention just between my two machines here at home. And, like, if I grab my... Yep. And that only works yeah, if you're on, the, and, on a network, which is easier now than it's ever been. It's so easy to just get on my phone's access yeah. point and go. But, boy, when I started doing this with C-File 10 years ago... There were lots of times when you were without yeah. connectivity for one yeah, you could, or another. You could have ten years ago literally gone on your on your unicycle, grabbed your laptop and just gone, and by the time you opened it up, you still would have been right where you were at your desktop. Yep. It's one of the reasons I leave my laptop turned on all the time. So that it'll as long as I don't you know, as long as I'm not so fast that I finish editing an Emacs and leave the house with the laptop in less than 30 seconds, then I'm, it'll be synced before I leave you need the house. A, you, know, it's a, you need to add I'm to your home automation. If any file has changed in, the, in your blog to not let you unlock your door until it's, until it's synced up. Yeah. Nope, you can't go, Pat. Sorry. But yeah, the thanks. I mean, in large part to tail scale, you know, I finally got to the point where I felt like I could... I could start doing some of the the self hosted cloud storage and I'm I'm pretty jazzed about that. It's exciting. It's, You're moving into the twenty yeah, first century instead of the the nineties file shares like we all used to use. It's uh it's liberating. Do you have a final few sentences you want to say about this before we cut off this uh segment here? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't well, that's know. okay. We could just end it wherever it ended. I don't know when it ended. Somewhere in there. This is true. Well, we're going to do it in two weeks. Two weeks. Should we? Should we announce? Now, see, I disagree with you and 3D WeB that we should do an introduction. But I'm wondering if we should do an outro to put on the four of these potential videos. Like we do the live stream every uh, every other every first Tuesday or something. Hmm. I don't. We don't. I don't even think we have to do it for this set of videos. Yeah, I'm not too. It's not about it. But this that's is, not a bad idea to routinely. Yeah. Say hey. Yeah, just routinely at the end of every episode, say we do this every first Tuesday of the, of month. the month, and make sure to like and subscribe. Yeah, make sure to click like the notification subscribe. bell. All those things. Smash, go in this smash outro. that stuff. And you know I'm going to use this as our outro. Well, I hope that you do for all these videos. This. 
this nonsense Pat- that we're speaking Patreon. Right now. We each have Patre- Patreon. Patreon. We do each have Patreon, and the URLs for those will be in the description. And if we were good at this, I would explain to you why it's a good idea to support us on Patreon. But I did not prepare for that, guys. So I'm I have to apologize for that. You you too might want a butt sensor for your home automation and your your contributions on Patreon are a huge reason why we're able to to make butt sensors. It's true. I could not have made a butt sensor without the support of my patrons. And I'm not even 